I'm sure by now most of us have heard the predictions about water, right? That water is going to be to the 21st century what oil was to the 20th century. That water stress, water scarcity will lead to food shortages and ecological decline, maybe even wars. And in my 25 years of working on global water issues, I've made some of those predictions myself. And I firmly believe that our human story over the next several decades will be to no small degree a water story. But the, but the conclusion of that water story is not a foregone one. We're still creating that narrative. And we're making that narrative every day by the choices we make about how we use and manage and value and even think about fresh water. So what I'd like to do this morning is talk a little bit about um, a new approach to freshwater protection that is being pioneered by National Geographic and its partners that basically shows that we can, in fact, change the course of that water narrative in a very positive way. Now, we're very lucky to live on a water-wealthy planet, but only 2.5% of all the water on Earth is freshwater. And two-thirds of that freshwater is locked up in glaciers and ice caps. So less than 1% of all the water on Earth is fresh and accessible to us. Now, it takes a lot of water to make all the things that we use and buy and eat and wear every day. If we think about a simple cotton t-shirt, 700 gallons of water to make a simple cotton shirt. Think about all the water we're wearing today in this room, right? Most of that water is consumed in growing the cotton out in the field. Think about a hamburger. Take a guess. 634 gallons of water for a simple hamburger. And that's not including the pickle, lettuce, and fries, right? It's a lot of water. If you're an average American, you use about that much water in a week at home. One hamburger's worth of water, a week use of, use of water at home. Cup of coffee, take a guess. About 34 gallons for an average cup of coffee. And in my point of view, those are gallons that are worth fighting over, right? <laughs> So that's a lot of gallons in all the things that we use and wear and buy every day. And then we have to multiply those gallons by the billions and billions of consumer meals, consumer purchases that we make every day, every week, every year. So it's a lot of water. And so it's not surprising that over time we've seen this map of water stress around the world getting redder and redder and redder with each passing year. So we're seeing in river basin after river basin, demands beginning to bump up against the limits of that finite water supply. We're seeing groundwater being depleted, and we're seeing rivers running dry, like the Rio Grande here in New Mexico, like the Murray in southeastern Australia, like the Colorado, which is the lifeline of the American Southwest. And so any hope we have of a more secure water future, right, depends on somehow changing this course, somehow figuring out how we're going to live happy, healthy, satisfying lives while consuming less water and returning some flows back to nature, back to these depleted rivers and freshwater ecosystems. And that's exactly what National Geographic and its partners are working to do. We're basically piloting a new approach to freshwater restoration that brings together consumers and corporations and on-the-ground conservation organizations to do two things, shrink that human water footprint and then restore billions of gallons of water back to depleted rivers and freshwater ecosystems. So we're calling this campaign Change the Course, and it's a partnership of National Geographic Participant Media and the Bonneville Environmental Foundation, or BEF. And we're piloting it in the Colorado River Basin, you know, an iconic American river uh, sculpted the Grand Canyon, today supports more than 30 million people, 5 million acres of irrigated land, but is really tapped out. It's in desperate need of, of restoration. So as you can see, it includes five key elements. First, we want to engage the public in a major way in this campaign. So we invite people in through National Geographic's freshwater portal, through the campaign's online and social media channels, to basically learn about the fresh water challenge, what's happening, get engaged, get informed, and also look at your own personal water footprint. So we have a tool online, our freshwater footprint calculator that's been a very popular tool to help people figure out their number, what is my water footprint, and give them some tips and ideas on how they can shrink that footprint. 
we invite them to pledge. And this is not a pledge of money. It's a pledge to do something in your daily life to conserve water, to shrink your personal water footprint. We promise for every pledge to return 1,000 gallons of water back to the Colorado River Basin. And what makes that happen are these sponsorships from corporations that also wish to balance out their corporate water footprints by returning some water to the environment. So it's corporate sponsors that basically underwrite those pledges, turn those pledges into dollars that then fund restoration projects on the ground. So far, our, to date, we've got two um, great corporate sponsors in Silk, the maker of soy milk, and Coca-Cola. And just last week, 1% uh, for the Planet announced publicly that they'll be joining our campaign as well. And then, of course, we restore. We restore flows back to the environment. So we work with conservation groups on the ground, and this is very important, to make sure that the projects we're investing in offer good ecological value, good ecological bang for the buck. So we work basically um, to make sure that every project is scientifically vetted, third party certified, tracked and monitored, and that the flows restored are registered in an online registry so it's formalized and th that water can't be double counted and, and reused. And so this process is basically done through our partner Bonneville Environmental Foundation's uh, very innovative program called the Water Restoration Certificate Program and it kind of brings it all together. And then, of course, we share the stories of these restoration projects. So we use our freshwater platform, our blog platform at National Geographic Water Currents to write articles about each of these restoration projects, photo galleries, um, web videos, to basically get the stories out. Why is this important to do? Why, what's happening? And how is it being done? And what is it accomplishing? So our first two projects uh, to date basically bookend the Colorado River Basin. Uh, the Yampa River is a beautiful headwater tributary to the Colorado, comes out of the uh, Rockies and then flows through the heart of Steamboat Springs in Colorado, on down through Dinosaur National Monument, joins the Green River and then enters the main stem of the Colorado further down. It's a beautiful headwater tributary. The second project is uh, in the Colorado Delta, the tail end of the river system in northwestern Mexico. It's one of the planet's really amazing, beautiful desert aquatic ecosystems. Once spanned two million acres of lush wetlands, beautiful bird habitat. Uh, Aldo Leopold, after canoeing there in 1922, came back and wrote about it, calling it a milk and honey wilderness, a land of 100 green lagoons. But you go there today, and it's a pretty desiccated place of salt flats and mud flats from the lack of water. So these are the two opening projects. And with, with these and with all other projects in the pipeline, you'll see a number that are on our radar screen. The next one up for us will be the Verde River in uh, central Arizona. We'll be going there next month. Um, with each of these projects, we want to showcase not only how we can get flows back into the rivers, but also how it's benefiting the communities and the farmers and the businesses that also depend on that river. So in the case of the Yampa, for example, you may recall last year we had a horrendous drought in much of the country, including the Colorado River Basin. And about this time of year, last year, in late June, uh, the Yampa River was flowing at about 5% of its normal flow for this time of year. So it was on the verge of an ecological crash as a river system. So we partnered up with the Colorado Water Trust to execute a water lease for the summer that basically allowed the flows in that river to come up to a healthier level throughout the summer, avoided a crash of the native whitefish population, allowed businesses like the tubing businesses, fly fishing, kayaking, which had closed down because the flows were too low, to reopen again, um, even allowed some farmers downstream to harvest an extra crop of hay. So from all we could see, it was a win-win-win all around. Um, and I'd like to just share with you the last 40 seconds of our video on the, on the Yampa. The scientists warn that drought years will become more common in the West. We need innovative approaches to freshwater management. This was a really important lease at the right time. And what I love about it is it's, it's really showing adaptability and that we can be resilient during these times of drought. Make sure that the river is not the last in line to get help during a time of drought. The lease purchase demonstrates new possibilities to balance the needs of humans and the health of our vital river systems. 
It's just one example of how people are working together to save the life-giving waters of America's great river systems. Now, the Colorado Delta is a more complicated and longer-term uh, restoration effort. Uh, some of you may have heard late last year, just before Thanksgiving, November 20th, uh, the United States and Mexico signed a historic agreement that basically commits the two countries to return some flow to the Delta and even enable the Colorado River to once again reach the sea, something I never thought I would see in my lifetime. But finding the water to actually do that is not so simple. It involves a lot of different moving parts, and among those parts is uh, farmers in the Delta, working and living in the Delta, voluntarily returning some of their water rights to a water bank called the Delta Water Trust. So we're working with conservation groups on both sides of the border to help fund and execute projects that would go through that water trust and begin to do the restoration of the Delta and begin to bring life back to the Delta. Uh, one of our main partners is through Osvel Hinojosa Huerta, pictured here with me in the Delta, um, who's uh, an ecologist with Pro Natura, a Mexican conservation organization, and a 2012 National Geographic Emerging Explorer. And I'd just like to share with you about a minute of uh, one of our three videos done in the, from our trips to the Delta in February, um, done here by National Geographic's Missions Media. The impacted fishing communities include the native Kukapa tribe, who fished and farmed in the Delta for over a thousand years but now they struggle to survive in the changing landscape. When I was a little girl, the river never dried up. Now that I'm old, look, it's dry. And when it's dry, it makes me sad. There's nowhere to fish. There's no fish. The good news is that restoration is possible. And now more than ever, conservation groups and governments on both sides of the border are working together to restore flows to the river. So there's a tremendous opportunity now to actually achieve this restoration in a way that we just didn't have uh, 15 or 20 years ago. So now's the time we can get this done. Even a small amount of water, just 1% of the river's flow, could bring renewal to the Delta and hope for the fisheries and communities of the Gulf. So that's a snapshot of Change the Course. Uh, we expect to have, by the end of this year, uh, at least a billion gallons of water returned to the Colorado River Basin, possibly as many as two billion. Uh, since we launched the pledging component of this campaign in February, we've had 10, more than 10,000 pledges at this point from all 50 states. District of Columbia, as well as 96 different countries. So we're off to a good start. Um, and if you have a second and a cell phone, please take a second to text RIVER to 77177 and join us to change the course. Thank you very much.